watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. I want to bring beautiful greetings from Mount Zion, the city of the living God, as God's oracle into the doorstep of your heart in this new year. Today being day 45, being a very astounding and prophetic day on this day of the Lord, I want to bless your heart. I want to encourage your spirit. I want to give you a positive catalyst that as you run with it today, in this year 20, 2023, you will never regret one second in this year with God. Now, remember that during our crossover night, we had the grace as oracles to present to you the mind of God that this year, 2023, is our year, our prophetic year, our divine year of God's supernatural favor, God's supernatural flavor, God's supernatural fruitfulness, and God's supernatural flourishing. So I pray for you that in the name that is above every other name, by the blood of Jesus, everything that does not look like what God has ordained for us this year, I command the root to die and wither. Every root of unfruitfulness, I command you in 2023, whether you have been programmed by hell, in the name of Jesus, the root of unfruitfulness, I cause you to die and wither. Every root of non-flourishing capacity, every capacity of non-flourishing demon, demonic activity, that capacity of lack of favor, that capacity where your life have made, have made a negative covenant with the spirit of unproductive unfruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, we come into a precisional synergy with the Holy Ghost of God via the will of the Father for this year to declare into the depth and the foundations of your life that in the name of Jesus, let everything that is not in consonant with the will of God, everything that have not fallen in line in pleasant places of favor, of flavor, of fruitfulness, and also flourishing, I command them in the name of Jesus in any aspect of your life. Let them die. Let them wither. Let them be isolated. Let them jump out of your destiny. Let them jump out of your health. Let them jump out of your future in this year 2023. And may the will of God find your life and destiny as a platform to express the purpose and the intent of God this year. I declare and decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, child of God, you will see fruitfulness like never before. Child of God, you will see flourishing like never before. Child of God, you will, you will see yourself walking in the result that you never expected because of the level of impute. This year, your output, your output will not be consistent with your input. The maximum capacity of your input will not be equivalent to the output because in the center of your productivity, God will take over all your effort and give you a mega fruitfulness that will shock your generation. Now, I remember telling somebody that for everything that God does, for everything that God does, God is a covenant making, God is a covenant keeping, and God is a covenant fulfilling God. I repeat, 
God does not work in isolation. He is a covenant making God presupposing that for him to do something in your life, you must have to agree over the tenant, the principle and the precept of what God will require from you and what God will do as you present those, you meet the requirement. So God is a covenant keeping God. If you understand the nature of God from this dimension, it will be easy for you to fulfill purpose and destiny with joy. He's a covenant making, he's a covenant keeping, and he's a covenant fulfilling God. Having known that God is like this in his nature of oppression, what do we do? When God gives you a sure word of prophecy, because the word of God, the spoken word of God at any time that comes or meets with you at any point or level in your life is a sure word. The word of God spoken is a sure word of prophecy. And God expects us to hold it, run with it, keep it, and begin to meditate upon it. Now, what does God require from us? For God to bring these four F's into manifestation in our life just like he did in genesis chapter one when the earth was void without shape the earth was empty the earth was filled with darkness yet in verse 11 we saw where god had to negate all the laws the laws of tilling the law the laws of pulverization of the soil the laws the laws of watering fertilization the the pre uh, the uh, pre-bed section the planting section the weeding section before we begin to harvest but here comes god circumventing all these principle in the singing and was able to bring forth fruit the only law that god must have used is the law of favor wherein you don't put much but you get plenty wherein what you don't deserve you see yourself get it in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 the bible now told us that all the state of darkness voidness and emptiness with the dark waters covering the whole earth and with all the negative activity happening in this earth turned around by God telling us for one reason because it was the third day child of God the same thing happened when Jesus was brutalized he was crucified he was confirmed dead and was buried with heavy stones covering his tomb the Bible said on that same third day because it was the third day it was not possible for death and grave to hold him captive he resurrected he resurrected with freshness freshness of skin freshness with a new flavor he came with a new flavor of celestiality formerly he was terrestriality he carried jesus christ but now he became christ jesus because it was the third day hell and grave could not hold him captive now watch this not only that that happened but the Bible made us understand that Jesus began to defy all the laws, all the laws of nature. Hey, why? Because this time God was able to bring out the mystery of the third day upon the life of Jesus. Now, why did that happen? Why did this happen in the third day? We began to notice some few things in the life of of the earth in Genesis, we noticed that the earth entered into an agreement with God. When God spoke, let there be on the earth, the earth responded and said, anything you want me to do is what I'm going to do. And God said, earth, bring forth. And earth was obeying the word of God. In the book of Joshua, we saw where God also said to Joshua, Joshua, if you can go ahead and show us this situation, and we're going to be looking at the wonder of the world. Now, the earth obeyed the world, and the earth saw the fruitfulness, saw the flavor and the favor of God. The same thing happened in the book of Joshua, chapter 1. Now, it came to a time after the, the, the great master of every form of 
supernatural activity Moses. In Moses was all the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the capacity and the tenacity, the sustainability of the Holy Ghost in his fullest apostolic and prophetic manner. Moses did everything that a man can do in assistance with the gods or the deity on this part of man. So Moses was almost seen as a god. But suddenly, the same Moses, before you know what was happening, God had to take him out of the scene. At this point in time, the Moses that was the raw material for the sign, the miracle, the wonders of Israel, to be able to get to the land of Cana was no more there. Now, I want you to paint this picture. Put yourself in the shoes. There was a cloud of uncertainty. There was a cloud of pain, regret. The Bible said Israel mourned and cried and wept and wept. Many of them were thinking about the fried chicken that came from heaven, from the hands of Moses. How are we going to eat this type of food again? Many of them was also thinking about the bottle, the, 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 the water that came from heaven from the rock. How are we going to see this type of thing? Many of them began to think, Moses divided the Red Sea. Who is going to do that again for us? It was such a mystery. Everybody in the camp of Israel became dejected and rejected. They became, they became confused. Are we going to be stranded as we have started 2023? We are about to enter into Cana and the raw material for the miracle signs and wonders from the hand of God is no longer there. What are we going to do? But in the midst of this, the Bible told us one man stood up and went before God and said, God, you cannot bring us thus far. You cannot bring us into the beginning of 2023 and abandon us. What do you want us to do? Now, God now began to make them know that you see what Moses did? It is true that is unique. It is true Moses was fruitful. It is true that the hand and the favor of God was upon Moses. It is also true that Moses had his own unique flavor. It is also true that Moses was a man that flourished in the hands of God to demobilize and dethrone the powers of darkness that held the people of God down. But God now told Joshua, from the book of Joshua chapter 1, I know what you are thinking about. And Joshua, you are in the first day or in the 10th day of January. And now you are thinking, Moses have left you at the center of your destiny and have abandoned you. But I want to tell you something. You can do better than Moses. Joshua was shocked. God, you said what? You mean I can be more fruitful than Moses? Come on now. God, you mean I can be more flavorous than Moses? My God, you mean just like the hand of God covered Moses? You mean I can do the same thing? Oh, oh you mean I can operate in a productivity quotient with the supernatural against the deities of this world more than Moses? How can that be, Lord? Moses was almost a deity. That guy was just extraordinary. At the center of January 2023, God now responded to Joshua and said, let me tell you something you may not know. Let me tell you something you may not have imagined. You see, in 2023, you will have favor more than Moses. You will have a unique flavor more than Moses. You will have an unusual fruitfulness 
more than Moses, you will also have an unusual level of grace and uniqueness more than Moses. But this cannot happen until you understand the secret. The secret that Moses walked with. And he said, God, what is this secret that I need to know? Child of God, God now took Joshua to the height of the celestial supernatural and exposed a secret that Moses worked with unconsciously that they never knew they could work with. One more time, I want to thank you for joining us in this aspect of understanding the secret and the mystery of how the word of God works wonder and how it can bring forth all the wonder working capacity of God in this year in your life. One more time, I want to thank you. You join us tomorrow, day 46, as we bring to you the secret, the wonder working power of the world secret that God gave to Joshua. And at the end of the day, Joshua enjoyed a 2023 that even cannot be estimated or quantified when compared with that of Josh um, and Moses to prove that God is true. That is what I'm going to be sharing with you tomorrow so that this year will be a sound year and everything God said concerning you will come to pass. Make sure you join me. Make sure you share. Invite your children, your husband, your workers, and everybody to be part of what I'm going to be sharing tomorrow. And it shall be well with you as you listen to what God has to say in our day 46 in the name of Jesus. God bless you for joining me today. I'll see you same time in this same session tomorrow as God opened up himself to us for us to succeed in the dimension of the spirit. Thank you and God bless you. One more time, I want to welcome you into 2023, our year of supernatural divine favor, flavor, fruitfulness, and flourishing. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Watching Amazing Fire TV.